Hello everyone, in this tutorial, we go through material setup. When you're about to create a tool pass for your material, you should first check the material setup and make sure everything matches what you are about to machine. So, the first thing you want to make sure of is that your thickness is correct. If you are cutting through material, the best thing to do is get a set of calipers and measure the exact thickness of your material. Sometimes when you buy a piece of material, it could say three quarters of an inch, but it could be more or less than the size that it is saying. So, it is always best to double check your thickness. The next thing you want to check is that you have your XY position set, which is where you are going to be zeroing your tool from. On most machines, the lower left hand corner is where you zero your project. And your next option is where you want to zero the Z height. Now, this would be where you zero your tools. So, if you want to engrave something without cutting through the material, you could zero off the material surface, because you'll get a more accurate depth of cut that way because your material thickness varies a little bit. From what you entered here, and you only engrave into the top surface, you usually use a material surface. If you are cutting all the way through the material, you have the ability to select the bed of your machine. And that would make you less likely to cut into your spoil board. Now this is your rapid Z gap above your material. You have two different rapids here. When your tool pads are running if it's not cutting and just traveling to a new location, it's called rapid movement. And this would speed up your machine just a little bit to go to the next position to not waste a lot of time. And our first clearance height right here, this will raise your tool from the surface of your material to the bottom of your cutter. It will raise it to whatever height you want. And that will be the traveling height in between tool paths. Now, you have to take that into account if you are using clamps or something of that nature. To hold down your material, you want to make sure this will go high enough to clear those clamps. If you have this set to a low distance and you have a clamp, holding your material down, you could have the possibility of hitting your clamp. And that'll probably break your bit or destroy something else. So, you want to make sure you're going to have enough clearance. So, you can play around with this and decide which height is best for you. The higher you make this, the more time it's going to take to keep moving up and down in between tool paths. So, that's another thing you have to account for. Now, your plunge height, just the second one here, is generally lower than your clearance. This is the height it'll rise to in between, let's say if you're cutting a V carving and you have several different locations where it has to move. In between each location, it'll just raise up this whatever distance you put here just a little bit, go to the next, and then carve, and then raise up a little bit and go to the next and carve. If you have this set to a high number, like your clearance height, it's going to take a lot longer to carve or cut whatever you're cutting because you're going to have a lot of up and down travel on your Z-axis. And that's just going to cause a lot of wasted time in between cuts. So that's another measurement you could play around with. I recommend doing some test cuts and just playing around with these numbers to get it to a height you're comfortable with. Next up, we have the home start position. This is the absolute position from which your tooling is going to start and end. You can change this if you like, I usually just leave it where it is. But this is where your tooling will start when you zero your tooling and then click your start button to start a tool path. It'll raise to this gap above a material, your Z height. And if you have an X and Y position set here, it'll move to that position and then it'll start cutting your design. When the design is done cutting, it'll return to the exact location you entered here. So you can play around with those measurements as well. And then just confirm that you have everything correct here and click OK. With this step-by-step -step guide, you'll be able to set up your materials, whether you're a hobbyist or a professional woodworker, this video is sure to provide you with the knowledge and skills you need to start creating toolpath. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel for more videos.